All right, folks, so uh, we're getting ready to do the angle of impact exercise uh, in our blood stain analysis module for the AJS 216 course. I wanted to record a video here to kind of uh, take you through the steps of how to complete this assignment. So I've actually opened up the assignment within Canvas, uh, and uh, we're going to take a look at the instructions, and then we're going to kind of look at some videos and I'm going to kind of show you how to actually complete the assignment. So if we look at the angle of impact assignment, uh, if we look at the supplies, uh, what you're going to need from your home is you're going to need a, a ruler uh, like the one I have here. Uh, you're going to need either a scientific calculator or you can use either your smartphone uh, that has a scientific calculator app. Or if you're actually using your laptop or computer, uh, you can actually, if you're using a, a Windows machine, uh, you can actually use the calculator that's been in, built into Windows. It actually has a scientific calculator option. The other thing you're going to need to complete this assignment is a Google Slides presentation that actually contains images of six different blood droplets uh, whose angles of impact you're going to actually calculate. I'm going to actually go ahead and click on uh, the Google uh, Slides um, link here so that we can actually open up the angle of impact exercise so you can see those droplets. So I go ahead and click on that. Uh, and this is what uh, the Angle of Impact Exercise Google Slides presentation looks like. You can see it's really just three slides. And on each of these th slides, there are uh, two um, droplets or droplet shapes. Um, and so there's a total of six droplets. And you see they're labeled droplet one, droplet two. Slide number two has droplet three and droplet four. And slide number three has droplet five and droplet six. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to actually calculate the angle of impact uh, in which these droplets actually struck the target surface. And the way you're going to be able to do that is by making some measurements of these droplets and then inputting those measurements into uh, a mathematical trigonometric formula. Uh, and so angle of impact. Uh, when, when, when blood hits a target surface, um, it can hit at an angle of 90 degrees or less. Uh, blood that drips uh, off the end of a surface and travels straight down and hits a target surface uh, is going to hit that target surface at uh, 90 degrees. And so when it hits a target surface, it's going to uh, leave a blood droplet that's basically a, a perfectly round circle. So its angle of impact is actually going to be 90 degrees. Now, what if that droplet, though, doesn't hit at a, uh, an angle of impact of 90 degrees? What if it doesn't hit straight on? What if it hits... Um, at a lower angle, something like 10 degrees or 30 degrees or 45 degrees. Well, what we're going to notice is that the droplet is no longer going to be a perfect circular, circle, rather, but the droplet is going to become uh, elliptical or oval in shape like we see these droplets here. So we can see the droplet 1 and droplet 2 definitely didn't hit um, straight at the target surface or at a 90 degree angle because they're not perfect circles. We can see that they're ellipses or ovals. Um, if you view the, the videos um, that I've included in the instructions for this assignment, you're going to be able to see some examples of that. I'm going to actually click on a couple of the videos and, and show you what I'm talking about. So uh, this video here um, shows uh, how the angle of impact of a blood droplet affects its shape. I'm going to go ahead and just play this video for you. You can play it yourself um, later. So this is what happens when a droplet hits at an angle of impact of 70 degrees. Now we can see that it's not a perfect circle. Uh, it's close, but it has become elongated because it hasn't hit directly at the surface. When we have a droplet that hits at 45 degrees, we can see that the elongation is much more pronounced. We get more of an oval or elliptical shape. If we continue to watch, the next droplet, which strikes at 30 degrees, is even more elongated. And then if we watch one more, we can see that the next droplet, which strikes at 10 degrees, is even more substantially elongated or elliptical in shape. So we can see that the angle at which the droplet hits the target surface has a major effect um, on the ultimate shape of the droplet. If we watch another video here, again, this one is also in the instructions. I'm going to go ahead and play it from a little bit farther back. We can see that as blood strikes target surfaces that uh, it becomes more and more elongated. So we can see, obviously, the shape of the droplet is a function of the angle at which that droplet hits the, the target surface. So obviously, looking at the droplets that we have for our exercise, uh, it is possible to actually calculate these droplets' angle of impact 
if we make careful measurements of two things. We need to make careful measurement of each droplet's width and each droplet's length. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure the width of the droplet, which is the distance from one side to the other side of the droplet. And then we're going to measure the length of the droplet, which is the, the distance from the front to the back of the droplet. So we're going to, again, we're going to measure its width and we're going to measure its length. And then we're going to input those two measurements into a trigonometric formula. So angle of impact actually involves a little bit of basic trigonometry. Now what is trigonometry? Trigonometry, uh, and I'm not going to have a whole lesson on trigonometry. You can take a, a class at the college on trig if you want. But trigonometry is basically the mathematics of triangles. And so what I've, I've uh, drawn on this little Word document here is a triangle. And we're going to manipulate this triangle a little bit. I want you to notice uh, the angle here at the bottom of our triangle. And then I want you to pay attention to this side of the triangle. And then I want you to pay attention to this side of the triangle. And I'm going to actually change the triangle uh, a little bit. Notice that as I decrease this side of the triangle, notice the effect that it has on this angle here. So as I decrease the angle, notice how it changes the length of this side of the triangle. Um, if I increase the length of the triangle, notice how the angle increases. Or, inversely, if I also change this side of the triangle, this length, notice it has an effect on the angle. It also has an effect on this angle. Or rather, as I change this side of the triangle, it has an effect on this angle. So as I increase or decrease the sides of the triangle, it affects the shape uh, of the angles. And so obviously, from this little demonstration, there is a major uh, impact uh, on the sides of a triangle and how that impacts the angles of a triangle. So that's what trigonometry is all about. Trigonometry is all about the relationship between the sides of a triangle and the angles of a triangle. Now the formula that we're going to use for calculating our blood droplets angle of impact is this. If you want to write this down or remember this, the sine of the angle, and by the way, the three trigonometric functions um, that really relate the angles of a triangle to their sides are the sine, S-I-N, which you see here, or the cosine, which is C-O-S, or the tangent, which is abbreviated T-A-N. The trigonometric function we're going to use for calculating angle of impact is the sine of the angle of a triangle is equal to uh, the width and the length. Or another way of saying that same uh, equation is that the angle is equal to the inverse or arc sine of the width divided by the length. So let's go back and look at some droplets now. So now that we know that there's a relationship between the sides of a triangle and its angles, let's go back and uh, take a look at uh, some images here. So um, Let's look at this image here. So this is an illustration showing a blood droplet traveling down towards a target surface. Now notice this blood droplet is not traveling at a 90 degree angle. It's not going straight down. So when it actually hits the target surface, it's not going to leave a perfectly circular droplet. It's going to leave an uh, elliptical or ovoid shaped droplet. Um, as the droplet travels and hits the surface, you're going to get a couple of measurements here. We have the this measurement which is the width of the droplet. And then we have this measurement, which is going to be the resulting length of the droplet. Let's look at another illustration. So as the droplet hits the target surface, the width here is going to be equal to this side of the triangle. The length of the resulting droplet is going to be equivalent with this side of the triangle. And since we know in trigonometry that this angle is a function of this length compared to this length. In fact, we know that the sine of this angle is equal to this length divided by this length, or in other words, the sine of this angle, which is the impact angle, is equal to the width of the droplet divided by the length of the droplet. So, if we go back to our droplets, if we simply measure the width of the droplet, and the length of the droplet, 
and input those numbers into our trigonometric formula. Even if we don't know a great deal about trigonometry, we do know if we simply input those two measurements into our formula, we're going to actually be able to calculate this blood droplet's angle of impact. So what we need to do then is we need to measure those two measurements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to hold it right up to my computer screen here, and I'm going to measure the width of this droplet. So I'm going to measure the width of the droplet, and this droplet that I have in front of me here, droplet number one, measures 15 millimeters. Now I'm going to measure the length of the droplet. The length of the droplet measures 28 millimeters. So this is 15 millimeters by 28 millimeters. So the width is 15 and the length is 28. Well, let's go back to our formula. All right, the angle that we're looking for, the angle of impact, is equal to the inverse sine of the width divided by the length. Well, we know that our width is 15 millimeters, and we know that our length is 28 millimeters. Well, we can plug that into our equation. And let me show you how we do that with our calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up uh, our Windows calculator. So I'm going to, on my computer here, I'm going to go ahead and just open up the calculator that is here in uh, my Windows operating system. All right, so this is what the calendar looks like most of the time because it's just a normal standard calculator. But I actually need the calculator to do some scientific uh, calculations for me. So I'm going to actually click and change this to a scientific calculator. And notice as I do that, that there's a whole bunch of buttons here that weren't there before. For example, we see there's a button for sine, cosine, and tangent. And we also see inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, or what one of the videos refers to as arc sine. All right. So again, let's go back to our equation. If I want to calculate angle, I need to take the arc sine or inverse sine of the width divided by length. Remember, if we go back to our droplet, droplet number one here, we measured the width at 15 millimeters and we measured the length at 28 millimeters. So let's go to our calculator. All right. The first thing I want to do is I want to enter my width. So I'm going to enter the width. The width was 15. And I need to divide that by the length. So divided by 28 and then I'm going to hit equals right now you might be asking me why did I do that why did I do that first if we go back to our formula notice that width divided by length is actually in parentheses and if we know anything about um, order of operations it's important that we do the stuff in the parentheses first so I'm going to go ahead and enter my width and divide it by my length first so again my width is 15 I'm going to divide it by my length, which is 28, and then I'm going to hit equals. Now I need to take the inverse sine of that number, and I want to take, I want to push this button. So I push inverse sine. I can see that my impact angle now is 32.392365. Really, we're going to round up to the whole number. So we can see that the impact angle for that droplet was 32 degrees. All right. So if we go back to our droplets here, so the impact angle of droplet number one was 32 degrees. Well, that's what we calculated. Um, let's take a look at some known droplets. Let's look at these droplets. These droplets have known impact angles. Let's look at the one that's 30 degrees. Let's look at its shape. Do you think that this droplet looks a lot like the other droplet? In fact, it actually does. Now, I'm going to let you calculate the impact angles of droplets 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 yourself. But before you do that, I want you just to think about this for a moment. Look at droplet number 2. Look how elongated that droplet is. My question is, do you think it's going to have a higher or a lower impact angle than droplet number 1? Well, considering the fact that it is much longer and substantially more elongated, that would tell us probably that droplet number 1 is going to have a smaller angle of impact. Well, your job is to figure out what that is. So what you need to do to complete this assignment then is using the formula I've given you, calculate the angle of impact for droplet 1, droplet 2, droplet 3, droplet 4, droplet 5, and droplet 6. And then you're going to submit those to me in the text box of the assignment. Like always, if you have any questions, please call me. Uh, you can send me a Canvas message or an email. I hope you guys have fun with this assignment.